Hi, in this video I will show you how I achieved this beautiful kaleidoscope soap design. I know these are not perfect but again practice makes perfect and with this kaleidoscope soap mold also you have to practice a few times to reach to that perfect result. This was my third attempt but this is the first time I actually made this soap. If you are interested in seeing why my first two batches failed, wait till the end of this video. But first, let's get started with how I achieved this result using this kaleidoscope soap mold. This is what I ordered to make kaleidoscopic design soap. It came with cute thank you card, manual for instructions, cute soap bags as a gift, 8 pull through designs. This is what will make design in your soap. You can pick any of the designs of your choice. Silicone mold to pour the soap in. It is very sturdy and both parts clamp in each other to form a round mold. Four pipettes, more on that later. Two clips to hold the mold together. Let me show you quickly now how these will be put together. All you have to do is just clamp two of these silicone parts together. Only first time it will take you a little time but it's pretty easy. And then the clips are just to keep them together after you pour the soap so there is no leakage of the soap batter because it will not be as thick. Next step is to remove the sticky covers from the acrylic pull through design. I had to use sharp scissors to make a small cut and then it came off. Be very careful if you use something sharp to remove this cover. A lot of people said that in the review that it's very difficult to remove it and I completely agree with them because this was a challenge. Last but not the least, a stainless steel road. The pull through design is to be screwed on this road. So there it comes with two screws. You remove one of the screws and put the selected whatever you like pull through design and put it there and screw it properly. Now it will be put at the bottom of the mold and road will help to pull the design through the soap batter forming the kaleidoscopic pattern. At the bottom like this and then you pour the soap and then pull it out. Now it's time for the fun part. As you can see I already have the colors that I selected in a container and here I'm mixing lye in the oil. The oils I'm using here is 100% olive oil. So I will first stick blend it. I stick blended it here until like it reached emulsion and I did not let it even reach completely to the trace. So I just wanted to make sure this is completely mixed. Then here I'm adding the fragrance oil and now I will be mixing it very well. Once it is completely mixed, I decided to divide it into three batters, the blue color, the green, sorry, <laughs> yellow color, and then some part I would leave colorless. So first I added little bit and then made sure I mixed the mica properly, the same for the blue and the same for the yellow one. Once the mica was mixed very well, then I added more of my soap batter so I don't get the clumps of mica in there. I did not really divide it very evenly and that's why you will see at the end I had a lot of blue left. So try to divide your soap batter in equal amount. Now we are going to reach to the fun part. You can see my soap is already at light trace. So I started with pouring the colorless one, then yellow, then blue and it needs to go in the center. I know mine is not, but my goal here was just to get this soap done. Not sure you know or not yet, but I had two failed attempts before this one and I was desperate to just make some designs. So I'm really happy that my batter did not clump 
and I didn't have a failed batch and I was finally was able to try this beautiful soap design so that's why I was like I'm not gonna get into the pipette or anything I'm just gonna use my funnel picture and I'm just gonna use that so yeah that's where I'm uh, using all my three colors that I have I mean colorless blue and yellow and you can see I'm pouring it one by one I only made this one pound batch when I say one pound batch it means one uh, pound of oils because after two failed attempts before I did not want to make a big batch and just decided to make only one pound so I just kind of cut it short but it did take me longer than this to pour all of these now this is the last of the soap batter that I'm pouring right now and after this we will use the road to pull through the design I'm pulling through the design here and then I will leave this for three days and I will unmold it this is after three days I unmold it because this is a hundred percent olive oil soap so it does take time to come out of the mold but after three days it easily came out of this silicone mold let's unmold it and cut it and see all these unique beautiful designs I'm actually in love the way they came out because this was my first try but this was not really my first attempt I had two failed attempt before this and stay tuned if you want to see the failed attempt because that will come right after this but if you're good with this you will be free to go after you see these designs okay so yeah let's cut them and then see these designs Till here I will explain you now why my first attempt failed as you can see I used the regular oils and then I used my regular process and I stopped even at emulsion too but what I did wrong here is at this point when I was adding fragrance the soap batter was already traced and it was already reaching to the medium trace then put it aside and started adding mica to the containers after I added mica to the containers and picked that batter back up and I noticed that it was already at almost medium trace and I would say medium to thick trace. Time I added this soap batter to the colors, I could just tell it is not going to go as planned. As you can see, it is really thick already. But I was so desperate to try it, so I still moved forward and followed the process. So what I did wrong here is I used a regular recipe that traces quickly as well as I used a fragrance oil that actually slightly accelerates the trace. So the combination of both made it reach to a thick trace and at this point you can see it is getting thicker and thicker. Now if you notice one more thing. My colorless soap batter is not as thick as the colored ones. Did you notice that? You will not find it in any books or internet website. Like at least I did not find it. But this is just my observation that alcohol, which is isopropanol, has also messed up my soap batches a few times. And this is one of them. So when I actually added the mica, I actually sprayed it with alcohol to make a mixture first. And then I added the soap batter and that's what I did in both of these blue color and the yellow color and I did not add it in colorless soap batter because I didn't have color there so I did notice that actually participated here make the soap batter accelerate so fast and only the parts where I had colors and I had alcohol so that's my observation so be careful with that when I made that 
attempt that I showed you before where I was successful. I did not use alcohol there and I only added the soap batter in the mica and mixed it there. Okay, now here is the funny part. As you can see, I'm really, really struggling to get that pull through design out because the batter is so thick like, and it keeps sliding from my hand. So I had to actually grab a towel and hold it with that. And then somehow I was able to pull through and it was a disaster. But anyways, that was my desperation to actually see what design it can still make. And I, I really was hopeful. I was like, I'm sure it's going to make some design. And actually, soaps didn't come out bad. And you're going to see it soon. And as you can see here, the kaleidoscope design didn't come out. But I think the soap looked still pretty and colorful and because the batch is still good so I can actually use these soaps as free soap samples. So if you're interested in one of these free soaps uh, send me a DM on my Instagram and I will be happy to send you but it's only for eight people because I only have eight of these. Okay now it's time to show you the second batch that failed. Now here the culprit is fragrance oil. So I used this fragrance oil that I did not know how it behaves. Recipe was good. I added this fragrance oil and for some reason this time I did not stick blend before adding the fragrance and I thought let's just add the fragrance first and then I'm gonna stick blend it but that did not go right. I added the fragrance oil at first it looked okay and then it started to, started to thicken up and then I thought okay I should just already separate it in three parts and start adding color because it's already thick maybe this fragrance oil accelerated the trace so that's what i did which was mistake i think if i had stick blended first i might have gotten something at least the batch was going to be good but anyways at this point i dumped the idea of making a kaleidoscope design and poured everything in the mold this does not look right so i just decided to dump it in the mold and looks like oil is separated still so let's put it back in the container and try to stick blend it because I never stick blended it so maybe that will save it and I tried to do that but it was getting so thick that I couldn't even stick blend it so I tried to stick blend it and I was like okay I don't want to break my stick blender either because I've heard those stories that it gets stuck and your stick blender breaks so I just decided to dump it back in the mold and all I did is just put it aside. So either I have to rebatch it or I'll have to trash it. But that was the story. Never use a fragrance oil that you have never tried before, especially if you are trying something new. Always try your fragrance oil in a smaller batch first and then make a note on the bottle or wherever you keep your notes. And make sure when you have a recipe where it's going to take you longer time, make sure you don't use a uh, fragrance oil that accelerates or separates or cause rising or anything like that but yeah here were the failures I did wanted to discuss it I feel like a kid for trying all of this I do um, find it very funny when I couldn't take it out the pull through design and when I, this one failed I was freaking out literally because I learned from it I wanted to share with you and I hope it was helpful and it was enjoyable so let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.